Hello, dearest friends. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. Today is Friday, October the 13th. Um, I should have done this a couple days ago, but I'm going to share it now. God bless us all. I'm going to share it right now. So um, please forgive me for where I'm going to probably have to end up placing this phone. Hmm. All right. So let me just get into what's going on. A couple days ago, I had a dream. In the dream, I was outside. Um, I was outside of the house in the in the yard um, I was in the ground I mean in the grass I don't know if I was like doing some yard work or I don't know what I was doing but it was nighttime it was nighttime so it seemed like I was like pulling weeds I don't know what I was doing and this man an obviously a Middle Eastern Muslim man walked like off the sidewalk and came to um, I thought he was just gonna uh, walk by me so I was like getting out of his way like it was like I was on the sidewalk or in the driveway part where he was gonna walk by but um, so I stepped out of his way and instead of him walking by he actually cut through the yard he actually cut through our yard. And um, I didn't really think too much of it. He seemed like he was like on a mission. So I didn't really bother him, you know. I just let him go through. Then I looked up and right behind him were two or three other people. Um, seemed like they were women. Could have been another man, but I know that at least two of them were women and they had on shirts him I didn't really notice too much about him but I was paying more attention by the time the two ladies were walking past and by then I knew that they were following him so I wasn't looking for them to pass by they just they started to cut through the yard too and they were trying to talk to me um, like I said, they had on t-shirts and I really paid attention to this one lady. They're all Arab. They did not speak English. The one word that they said that I understood was Obama. Mm, mm, mm. And the t-shirts that they had on said Antichrist on them. And they might have even had the Obama on the t-shirts too. So they were like, not yelling, but like going through the neighborhood like a, like a, a herald saying Obama. And like they were warning like, oh, uh, it's like they were, like they were, uh, they were just yelling something, something about Obama and they had Antichrist on their shirts. And I'm thinking, I can't understand what they're saying because the only thing I can understand is Obama and they're speaking a language that I do not understand. Now, the one lady that I interacted with, I tried to ask her, are you saying he's the Antichrist? But like I said, we couldn't communicate. She didn't know what I was saying and I didn't know what she was saying. And she, um, she was very nice to me. She was very nice. She didn't seem hostile at all. It seemed, she seemed warm, like she was trying to, to warn me or just warn in general, they're just going through the neighborhood yelling something. 
trying to let everybody know something. Like, like they were warning. And like I said, it was dark. And the man, it seemed like he came back. And I especially wanted to, oh, he was concerned. He was very concerned. And he was talking about, he said something about Israel. He said something about Israel. And I wanted to let him know. He wasn't necessarily talking to me when he said the stuff about Israel. It might have just been in there yelling and and crying out through the street. And I was trying to get to him when I woke up. And what I was going to tell him, I wanted to make it a point to tell him. I wanted to comfort him concerning his um, distress about what was going on in Israel. And his distress was um, for the Palestinians. His distress was because he knew that what these people were accusing the Palestinians of was going to cause them great grief. Father God, please forgive me for not making this video right away. Glory to your name. Um, he was upset and I wanted to comfort him and let him know that um, they were going to get theirs. That the people who created this charade and a rogue pretense to attack these people, to attack the Gaza Strip and the people that live there. Glory be to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. They want to finish the settlement of their people into the place where the Palestinians previously were for hundreds of years until this little thing called the Balfour Declaration. Please look it up. It was the the, the kickoff of the um, it was the kickoff of the uh, the, the the physical The, the physical um, beginnings of the occupation of what was known as Palestine. It was the... Um, mm, they, this guy, Lord Balfour, was, you know, paid off to say, to be the one to suggest that um, there be a Jewish homeland and that it be in the place where the Lord removed them from in 70 AD. He removed them during the Babylonian captivity or at the Babylonian captivity and then he allowed them 70 years later to return then during the um, then they got overrun by Rome because of because of uh, adultery against God and idolatry and then they finally got totally carried away in 70 AD and um, Jesus said that they would not see his face anymore until they said, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The people that acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord will be the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and the 12 sons of Jacob that will be returned to that land. Um, the first fruits of God's revelation of himself to mankind 
and his plan of reconciliation to his creation began with the descendants of Abraham. And it will greatly delight the father to um, comfort and welcome and keep his promise to Abraham through the, a remnant of Abraham's descendants. There are um, a lot of converts to Judaism in the world today. Most people that you see that are prosperous and prominent and elite, a lot of them are simply converts. They don't have any, um, they don't have actual confirmation that they are of any any um, genetic relation to Abraham. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. Let me get back to the dream. So what I wanted to tell this man was I wanted, I wanted to get to him to comfort him and I wanted to tell him because they were so, he was grieved and he was just sad about what this, um, what these false accusations were going to do, were going to be used to justify against the Palestinians. They want the rest of those people out of the Canaan. They want them out of that place. And they want to go back and put themselves back in it. If I were um, in front of my computer and could really bring up scriptures, I could flesh this out a little bit more. But there is a people at the end time that are going to try to um, force prophecies to come forth of God restoring the remnant back to the land of Israel and they're trying to force that they're trying to bring the um, the prophecies to pass and I forget the exact phrasing that the Bible uses and so all of this stuff starting with the Balfour Declaration to bring about a um, to bring about what is talked about in um, to bring about what is talked about and what will take place at the end of time and um, with the coming of the millennial reign where God will restore them back to Israel. But it's not going to happen until they see the Lord in the sky. And it's not going to happen until they <clears throat> look at whom, him whom they've pierced and receive him, Jesus Christ, um, as their Messiah. So anybody who gathers there saying they're Israel is, you know against the scriptures. It's against the scriptures. It's kind of like um, when they refused to go into the promised land the first time when Moses was was leading them and going to lead them into the promised land and the 12 spies came back and brought an evil report saying, oh, we're like grasshoppers to those people. We can't possibly take them and and we, you know, we, we should have stayed in... in um, Egypt and all this stuff and God got very angry and he told him you know you're going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until all of you who, re who are 20 years old and over and refuse to go into the promised land as I commanded you and have faith in me that I was going to give it to you you're going to wander in the wilderness until you all die and then I'll bring your children in and that's what God did 40 years later with Joshua
so, um, so that's the way it is now. The, and then when they tried to say, okay, we'll go fight. We'll go, we'll go on into the promised land. I want to say that they got beat up real bad because God was like, no, no, you you can't. Once I tell you to do something and you don't do it, and I make up my mind about something and then you try to go later. No, I'm not with you. Don't go up. I'm not going to go with you. That's what he told them. And they went and got beat all up. And they had to go slink it off into the wilderness and um, wander for 40 years until they were all, each and every last one of them were dead. Except for Caleb and Joshua who were actually over 20 but willing to fight and to go into the promised land. So, no, uh, 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 mm -mm. nope, that place is not sanctioned. The people who are there now are not there with the sanctioning of God. It's, it's as if they tried to go into the promised land when God told them no. And so, and just like then, it's been nothing but trouble. It's been nothing but trouble over there. Nothing but trouble. Because the Lord didn't go with them. He didn't go with them. And they tried to bring about the prophecy. They tried to emulate through their own actions and the, the vast banking fortunes with which they control the entire world. Um events to and history and the the telling of events to make it look as if um there was some miraculous happenings that restored them back in 1948 when really it was just bully moves against shepherds unarmed shepherds Okay, and then the other thing I want to say is, Father, help me remember, help me remember what it was I was going to say, Jesus. I was going to say, mm, mm, mm. give me a second here, because it was important. Well, hopefully that'll come back to me, but back in 20... 16 I'll try to link link these videos there was a video I don't know if I even still have a copy of it because it was on a previous channel that I had and it was what well, what it was was Benny Hinn was in some place that looked like the United Nations and all the nations took a vote and they were going to do something against Israel. I did not know what they voted to do. Glory be to God. I did not know what they voted to do. But they voted to take some action against Israel. And I did not know why. I think I had a feeling it had something to do with the Palestinians. In favor of the Palestinians. And they voted to do this thing against Israel. But the thing they voted to do, ironically, was bad. It wasn't, God, it wasn't pleasing to God. So, um, and then after they cast their votes and they announced that it was, you know, basically like unanimous that they were going to do this thing against Israel, that the United Nations was going to take action against Israel they all started jumping up and down in the assembly of the United Nation cheering we did it we did it we did it and Benny Hinn was leading them in this also that same year I believe it was that same year perhaps the year before I heard 50,000 to invade Jerusalem. 50,000, meaning troops, to invade Jerusalem. 
And that was, I believe, that was against the Israelis, not against the Palestinians. So that's what I was telling the guy, what I wanted to tell the guy before I woke up, what I was endeavoring to tell him. Don't worry. They're going to get theirs. These Zionist conspirators who are constantly setting you up in the media to look like you are some sort of a threat to them when they are not a threat to them. It is their excuse to wipe them off the land, which is not the will of God. Because God will take a people that are wicked and replace them with a people who are going to do his will, who are under his command. And right now, those people that are in Israel are not more righteous than the Palestinians. I'm sorry to have to say that, but they're not. They are celebrating homosexuality like it's their grandmother's birthday. They are, if any foul, disgusting doctrine, any foul, disgusting, um, what do you call those things? The platforms of the Democratic Party are the platforms of the nation of Israel. Glory be to your name, Father God. If you want to know where America is headed policy-wise, look at everything that they're pushing in Israel. It is a seething bed of liberal vomit and every foul and hateful bird of abomination before the Lord is going on there in their policies. And you think, oh, you know, this is Judeo-Christian values. No. No, those are not the values that are espoused in the Torah. And there are Torah-keeping Jews. Some have come to Christ, some have not. And God bless those people who have turned to their Messiah. God bless those people who have, you know, said, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. That the, they acknowledge that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sent his son to die on a tree. To be the fulfillment of the things that were illustrated in the law. For him to be those things in the flesh and to suffer and die for not just Israel, which is what the disciples of Jesus Christ initially thought. The Jews initially thought it was only going to be salvation for them. But look at the glory of God to not just save them, but for the whole world. Jesus Christ died for the whole world. Bless his holy name on his flat earth. So, um, okay, that's the other thing I was going to say. Before I knew that any trouble had broken out over there, I was at work. And somebody at work had on a television. But the, t the sound on the TV was turned down. And all I saw was people with guns, people jumping on the backs of trucks. And it looked... Uh, ah, shh. thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. It looked completely and totally staged. It looked like um, the garbage that they set up at the um, Boston Marathon hoax fake stuff. When, when I was just looking at it, there was no sound. I had no idea what it was, where it was, what I was watching. I just was... Um, doing something at work and I just happen to look up at this TV and I see these people play acting 
trying to um, look like there was something going on. And I see guys with rifles holding them up, aiming them and everything. And, and, and reporters just walking around like they could not possibly get their heads blown off. So it just, it looked like stay, it, it was staged. Then I came to know that, oh, this is, this is, it. this is supposed to be in Israel. So they pretend and stage some stuff like the Palestinians did some attacks on them, which they have not done which they are just sorely outgunned and they have been um, just, man, these people are being so persecuted. The Palestinians are being persecuted. They are being maligned and um, vilified. And meanwhile, they're just people trying to exist up under the foot of the beast. And that's a fact. And if anybody tries to say anything about it, they just call you an anti-Semite. Meanwhile, it's just true. And there are wonderful people who identify themselves as descendants of Abraham or followers of the Jewish religion that are not necessarily descended from Abraham who are not involved in this. This is an elite thing. And I saw that on television. Now this is for real. Uh, what day was that? Sunday. I saw that on television Sunday night. Oh, no, no, no. Monday morning, I believe it was. It was way after midnight. And I'm like, oh no, my heart sank. Like what kind of fakery are they coming up with? But, and Jesus help us. So um, later on, a couple days later, sure enough, here comes the retaliation. And that fake staging stuff was all about setting up the retaliation because they want them people up out of there. Just like they're claiming, reclaiming inner city neighborhoods through gentrification here in America. They're trying to drive the, the peasantry out of these areas so they can build million dollar condos and move the rich and wealthy back into the, the um, inner cities and make make uptown again is it downtown no downtowns make downtowns into um, desirable places to live streets that you fear to go down a few years ago they're converting those neighborhoods in cities all over the country and that's what they're wanting to do in Palestine. Get them people up out of there. And it's just that simple. It's just that simple. You want to make it about religion, you can make it about religion if you want to, but no, it's not about religion. It's about money. Because money is the root of all evil. Religion is not the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. The love of money. Specifically. So that's what I wanted to say to the guy. Now, 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 I also had a dream, but I'm going to link it. It was called Comfort She. I called it Comfort She, Comfort She. Because there's a scripture um, where the Lord punishes Israel in these last days. And then after he has punished them, he comforts them. And the nation that he uses to punish he also punishes them. So these people that were jumping up and down saying, we did it, we did it, we did it, and they voted to do this thing to Israel. The, the Israel deserves it. <clears throat> but they're going to go too far. It's going to be 
of violent, miserable, and horrible what they're going to do to Israel. And it is, it's not going to please God. It's like God used the Assyrians to punish Israel, the northern kingdom. And then he turns around and punishes the Assyrians for going against Israel. For what they did. Because they just go in with a bloody vengeance. So that's the way God is. He uses a rod to chasten you. Another nation, another person, some circumstance in your life. And then he turns around and punishes the rod. Because vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I will repay. Even if we let alone and nobody votes against the, the Israel, Israelis to, do, to defend the Palestinians. Because world, world, um, world, world sentiment, world sympathies, world sensibilities are going to swing away from Israel. in the way that they are able to dominate the media and make, make themselves look like victims. Make themselves look so sympathetic, the power of the media, and God calls it the Jewish media because they truly, truly control it. And through it, like a well-oiled machine, they're able to um, control the sway of public opinion. So they're going to be severely punished for the atrocities that they have done to the Palestinians. People who have been made to look like they're warmongering and they just hate them for no reason and they're just these god awful horrible people that just want to kill uh, Israelis just because they woke up in the morning and it isn't true they're truly just defending themselves and, and not even really defending themselves because they have nothing to fight those people with. They are oppressed and degraded. And from the things that I've seen, you haven't seen anything like the degrading that's been going on with those people since um, probably some movie about slavery in America. Talk about what you're ha having your hat in your hand and stepping off the sidewalk and getting out of people's way. The occupation of the Palestinian areas in the so-called defense of the, of the Jewish settlers have been nothing short of atrocities against humanity. But you're not going to see that. You're definitely not going to see it anymore on YouTube because they make sure they scrubbed all that clean. You won't see it. You have to go looking hard for it. Even pray about it. But just know that when the world turns on Israel, they are going to go too far. Not that God minds them being punished for what they did, but whatever it is they're going to do to Jerusalem, it's going to go too far. And then after they have been sufficiently punished, God is going to comfort that place and people are going to turn to him. Perhaps it's, it'll be the fulfillment of the 144,000 because sometimes we just don't turn back to God until we're being punished. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. And that's according to the way I see and uh, according to the things that I've dreamed and as always, or as lately, I'll say, make sure you do pray about what I've said. Make sure you do pray about the opinions that I've shared. 
and the interpretations of the things that I've seen because I am fallible. I'm just a human being. I just see through a glass darkly. I'm just doing the best I can. And um, I just pray God that you'll seek out God's confirmation for these things. So you can know them for, the, for yourself and that you won't be guilty of um, acting off of a false witness. Get the witness for yourself. And, and if these things are just confirmation of things you already knew, amen. God bless.